There's a new brand I haven't talked about yet. You've probably heard of it before. Tokina. Tokina. That's right. It's, uh, this is the 80 to 200 and it's the uh, granddaddy of the uh, 70 to 200 that everybody cherishes in their Sonys and Nikons and uh, Canons and whatnot. Uh, but this is a manual lens. This is the, uh, the only zoom vintage lens that I have in my collection. And it's a, it's a Canon. It's a beast. It's three pounds or, or 1,350 grams. You know, you can work out with this sucker or you can defend yourself with it. Hit somebody in the head with it like a brick. <laughs> but let's talk about that a little bit later. So, uh, stay tuned and we'll talk, we'll talk about the details of this bad baby right here. Here I am, V-A-M Green is always coming down So this is Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. So this week, we're looking at a, you know, just like the intro said, it's a, it's a, a brand that I haven't discussed yet in my, uh, in my vintage collection. And this is, this is the monster right here. It's my only zoom lens out of all the vintage lenses that I have. Um, and as you can see, it's a beast, uh, it's a beast of burden. Beast of burden. That's what it is, it's a workhorse. Uh, it's an 80 to 200, uh, F 2.8 constant, uh, throughout its range. It's, uh, you know, it's quite famous for its day. Uh, a lot of rumors out there thought this was the precursor to the 70 to 200 millimeter F 2.8 that, uh, uh, you know, Sony and Canon and Nikon and everybody has as their, uh, as their go-to zoom portrait lens kind of do all work all horse. Um, but this is, this is manual. This is all completely manual focus. And, uh, you know, that, like I said, the rumor of it being the precursor to that is not true. Actually Nikon created one about two years earlier again, manual lens and whatnot. So they were actually the grandfathers of the, uh, of the 70 to 200. Holy crap. But this baby here is still a pretty cool lens. Um, you know, for, for what it is, there's lots of glass, you know, it is super heavy. Uh, just as I mentioned, it's three pounds, 1350 grams. Um, you know, it's all metal construction, uh, you know, it's uh, 17 elements in 11 groups. It's close focus distance is uh, 1.8 meters, which is not bad for uh, a lens like this. You know, changing the, uh, the range on this thing is, is push and pull. So if you, you see here, you know, up, up top, all the way in, this is 80, starts with 80, comes back to 100, then 135, and then up to 200 by just pulling. So it's up this way, down this way up this way down this way it's kind of kinky isn't it go blind yeah but anyway this is uh this is how it works and we have the range scale here for those who do uh you know zone focusing and, and whatnot you know they're all on the uh the old manual focus um uh lenses like this so you could actually set up your uh your uh aperture ring and then match your match your uh, scale of distance here to be able to figure out what's going to be in focus without technically having to look through through the lens it has uh, six aperture blades um, and uh, you know again it was it was made by uh, Tokina in, in 1983 and it was uh, as I say it's it's good bang for the buck for for a uh, vintage lens um, you know, to talk a little bit about Tokina, uh, you know, Tokina itself started in, uh, 1950. Uh, so they were kind of late into the game uh, as opposed to the other Nikons and Canons and everyone else who was playing, uh, in Japan back in the day. So 1950, they, uh, started out their company name was, uh, Tokyo optical equipment manufacturing, you know, it was the name or in, in uh, in Japanese, and you know me, I'm excellent with my Japanese pronunciation. So it was, it was uh, known as Tokyo Koki Saisakusho. Say, 
I don't speak Japanese very well in Japanese. Who knows if I said that right or not, but it sounds cool, doesn't it? Um, and they pretty much were, were grinding glass uh, for, um, you know, slide projectors and, uh, and things like this. And then they got into the SLR game uh, along with uh, others and began making, uh, making lenses for uh, Henemix in uh, Australia for, you know, 10 years, if not more. And then in 1960, they changed their name to Tokina and it was uh, derived from Photokina. You know, that uh, trade show uh, famous in the, in the world of uh, cameras and photography. Um, so Tokina came from that. And, you know, they produced a lot of lenses. This is the ATX uh, line here and the ATX is their uh, advanced technology and then X stood for 10, the Roman numeral 10, because they were going to develop 10 lenses in the uh, AT, ATX line. Um, it's their pro line. You know, this is the, uh, the, their top of the line uh, for, their, for their lenses uh, back then. And, uh, and that continued on, as I said, this was made in 1983. But 1985 rolled around and uh, Minolta created... Uh, a camera which shook up the uh, up the photography world, uh, the A7000, and it was autofocus. So, you know, Tokina and, and a lot of the other companies out there uh, began to suffer because of it, because everybody wanted autofocus now. No more of this manual focus, mumbo jumbo. Get the fuck out of here. So, um, so they jumped into the game too. Uh, and began creating autofocus lenses. And, uh, you know, the rest is history from there. You know, I have other, other Tokina, I have a wide angle uh, 11 to 16 um, ultra wide that I use for, uh, you know, my, my, uh, my Canon because it's a, uh, a PSC designed lens. Um, but anyway, it's, uh, you know, it's autofocus, so I don't include that in my, in my camera talk you know, weekly stuff because uh, I generally focus on, oh, there's Dylan. He's awake. Everybody knows Dylan, right, from my other videos. My little son, he just turned 34 weeks this week, so he's uh, still practicing his screaming and crying and, hey, pay attention to me because I'm a baby and I want attention. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you some photos now to show you um, I took I took pictures using this on my uh, on my Canon M50, which is filming this video at this moment, and it's an APS-C sensor. So you're going to see um, the result of photos being taken with this uh, with a crop factor of 1.6. But I also uh, took some photos using this on my uh, uh, my A7R2 up here, which is a full frame uh, camera. So you're going to see the differences between APS-C and full frame using this. Um, using this lens, so uh, you know again, I took some pictures of Dylan. Uh, sitting there having a little snack with grandma. Um, I shoot, you know, everything wide open, of course, at uh, 2.8 because everybody loves to see what it can do wide open. And then I uh, took some photos throughout the range, starting at 80, 80 uh, millimeters, then 100, then 135, then 200, just to show, you know, its, its uh, capabilities. So again, it's, it's a, a super lens. It's a beast of a lens. Uh, it's very economical in today's terms. Uh, you know, I'll post what I paid for it up here. So um, prepare for that and uh, I'll show you those photos right now. All right, so that was my, that was my Tokina ATX, uh, ATX 80 to 200 millimeter. Uh, 2.8 constant 
And it's, uh, again, it's a big honking lens. It's a 77 millimeter uh, filter thread on there. So anyway, uh, that's it for this week. It was a quickie episode of Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. And you know, this is modesty photography and we're here all about saving you money, teaching you about some, uh, you know, ins and outs of, uh, you know, photography for those newbies out there who, who may enjoy watching these types of videos to learn some little something about there. Of course, my videos are also included in the entertainment realm since I don't, uh, I don't uh, purport to have any great expertise in photography, but you know, I pass along what I know and, uh, share with you the sounds of my uh, wonderful son, soon-to-be karaoke singer, Dylan. Um, so, what I would like to ask is that you uh, help support my channel. Give me a woo! So how do you really feel, mister? Why'd you do that? Why not? So if you could subscribe. Subscribe. And one more time, if you can subscribe for me, my channel, that would greatly help uh, expose me out to the world. And, uh, you know, maybe get me, a, get me a few other subscribers, you know, signing up to uh, watch my weekly episodes of Camera Talk with Dr. Scott. And, uh, hey, why not give me a thumbs up? So it gives me the opportunity to show you the thumbs up, girls. All right, so uh, another thing too, if you're looking for any economical um, software for editing your photos, Luminar is something very cool. Actually, they just came out this week. They, they uh, sent me my Luminar AI, which is a, another version of Luminar, which uh, you know, lets the software pretty much edit for you kind of thing, you know, with a one click here and there kind of thing, almost like a, almost like a uh, Instagram little little uh, feature in there just a quickie click 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 and away you go um, of course you can fine-tune it to your own liking or whatever but for people like me who are super busy especially with a you know almost eight month old baby here um, plus a university teacher and busy marking essays all day and this and that preparing for classes I'm really don't have the time to spend a lot of time editing photos so something if i can click 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 here and there um zoop it up then i'm that's for me so anyway if you want to uh save some money on luminar look below there not below here but what are you looking at below on the uh, video and you'll see a link uh, where you can save ten dollars and uh, it helps me help support the, you know, the poor teacher here so anyway thanks for dropping by uh, stay safe out there. I know COVID's still ravaging my uh, home country, uh, but here I am in Vietnam where we have maybe a hundred people out of 97 million who have COVID. So I'm feeling pretty safe where I am. So you stay safe where you are and uh, wash those hands, wear your mask and uh, come on back next week and we'll talk some more about uh, some cameras. Camera talk with Dr. Scott. All right, bye-bye. Here I am.